So, the past couple of nights I've been working on a new music video for Jesse Reed. Just got it up online. There it is. Taking a look at mine tonight. Now, uh, that I've got that up, I decided I'm going to actually add some closed captions. And there's actually a feature on YouTube where you can closed caption it. But it requires uh, uploading a closed caption file, which can be a bit tedious to make sometimes. So, I've uh, actually got my own little closed caption generator I built a little while ago, just specifically for doing this task. And it actually automates the process of creating closed captions. So first what I did is I took the lyrics. Uh, this is the raw lyrics that I got from Jesse. What I basically do is I just take the, the lyrics and I put it into a raw lyrics text file and basically every single line in this text file will be a new line of lyrics. This is actually something I use as input for my program that I created. So that would be the uh, source text. So I clicked on source text and I would browse it for this lyrics file. And then I will use this for the process of creating a closed caption file. Uh, then I also picked an audio source, and that's the soundtrack. And then an output destination, that's the output closed caption file location. And the file name is the name I wanted the closed caption file. Now that I got that done, uh, to actually generate this closed caption file where every closed caption has its own timestamps to tell exactly when to show up in the video, all I have to do is hit begin. And this thing will start up, and this gives me little instructions on how to use it. But basically the way it works is it will play the audio track while displaying what closed caption is coming up next. And I literally hold space for the duration that I want it to be displayed, and it will automatically take the times and put them into the closed caption file. So, let's just see what happens when I hit enter. Taking what's mine tonight. And you can see right here that the next words is taking what's mine tonight. So I would hold that down, and now it's saying taking what's mine tonight. And it shows me a little query of what ones are coming up now. And up there you can see the in and out timestamps. So yeah, it actually makes it quite handy. Otherwise I'd have to manually type in on these, uh, these values. Now I'm just going to cheat here, I'm just going to enter through the rest of them just so I can show you the end result. And here we are. So this is what it actually generated. This is what's actually required. And basically it's just an in and out and then the time. But you can see it would be very tedious to actually have to type that out manually. You'd have no idea where it's supposed to go. So this uh, is a very nice automated process for creating closed captions. One downfall though is that uh, if you kind of screw up, you have to fix it manually. You can't really stop it because you have to do it while it's playing, but it is very quick. If you do it right, it only takes the amount of time to play the video to actually create the closed caption file for it. And then I would take this file and upload it. So let's actually just do that now. See what it does with it. Uh, closed caption, English, upload, it's in there. There we go. And now, see YouTube has it. And YouTube can show me my actual captions. And here we are. Closed captions are in place. And that's an optional feature that people can turn on and off now. And if I really wanted to, I could also add alternative closed captions. Right now I've only got the English taking what's mine tonight. That's the one I just created. But if I wanted to, I could make different language versions. Or other weird things. I don't know. Whatever. So yeah, that's closed captions. Launching my closed caption program. There it is, checking for updates, and it's loaded. So if I open up the source code for this closed caption generator, you can see that uh, it was January 30th of 2012 that I made it, so it wasn't too long ago. And uh, there's a, oh, I got a decent amount of code here. 230 lines in the first program, or in the main program. But then, this isn't the only file. I'm actually using quite a number of custom includes that I've built, not just for this, but for many programs I make. VBS module, that's a pretty large one. Got all kinds of pop-up windows using VBScript. Shady, that's the special button GUI system I have. Sort, that's just for sort and arrays. That's for grabbing certain types of Windows events. Version control, that's just for keeping track of my versions. And AppTrack, that handles the update features, auto-update features. So all those modules I was talking about are all within this folder. So here are all the modules that I'm using for it. And the, I created every single one of these modules. That's the GUI I built for it. 
quite extensive. Here's the sort module. Very extensive VBS module. If I go down to Mark, you can see all the different functions I have created inside of this module. Browser, input box, notice message box. And then win event grab. Yeah, this one just basically allows me to get control of the X on a program. So I know if somebody clicks this because Turing doesn't have that natively, you don't know. File browse, this is actually an entire program I was working on for like a year and then eventually I turned it into a module. So file browse, this is a what I use as a file browser. This is in itself is a 2000 long line program. And then it has its own modules on top of that. And then EI library, this is something kind of cool. This is a, a system I created for storing images within the code itself. So I would use a program to basically take a folder of images and it would convert it into code that would then generate those images on the fly when you run the program so you don't have to carry the images with you. So the manager, that's just managing all the commands. The engine, that would, this is what actually does the conversions actually generates the image files based on these files which are RGB values in a huge array which would make up an actual image. So uh, after thinking about it a bit I uh, got curious so I decided to actually count how many lines of code my entire program is with all the modules. Whee! I'm at four and a half thousand lines. Now the only thing I haven't included yet is this browser uh, all the browser module stuff, it's 5,000 lines. It's interesting to think that this little application here is 9,000, nearly 10,000 lines of code. Pretty crazy. So, just for fun, I'm going to run my program. And usually when I run it, it executes fairly quickly. And there it is, loading up. And now it's running straight out of the ID Turing environment. What I really want to show you is they have something called trace execution where it actually shows you what line it's on and what module. I'm actually going to make this trace relatively quickly and have it run through the entire process as it's loading. Let's see how crazy this is. Run. Look at all those applications. These are all separate files. This is the, the route that it takes. Right now it's going through the IE engine. This is the image generating library I created, and it's going through and taking values out of an array and basically generating bitmap images so they don't have to include the files with it. I used a, a program I wrote earlier, well, quite a while earlier, which takes raw images and converts them into these modules. So right now it's just going through the engine and generating it. So. And over here, I can see it's just saying loading. So this is actually running a lot slower, a lot slower than real time. That's pretty crazy. Okay, now it's somewhere else. Checking for updates. Okay, trace execute. Turn you off for just a second until you do something else. Do so oh, there we go. It's doing something else now. Okay, now it's just running through the shady UI. That's just literally this right here. So now it's just running through its regular loops where it goes through shady UI. Shady UI is these, this button module, what's causing these, these to fade in and out. That's what's handling all that. Whee. Yeah, so most of these modules are actually just for this right here, this little program. And a lot of them are like these little icons here for actually generating them out of pixel per pixel using draw dots. So there's actually quite a number of icons. Like I've actually got a little library of uh, different icons for different items in here. So that actually uses it with, like, quite a bit. Yep. All for this little closed caption generator.